Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with another air fryers recipes video for you all. I can see that you guys love content like this from my previous videos so I'm bringing you a brand new one today. So today I'm sharing six new recipes that you can make in your air fryer. So if you are new, I have the Ninja Dual Zone Air Fryer. It comes with two baskets and it is amazing. I love it. I experiment with it every single day and I really enjoy cooking different foods in there. So the cooking time is so much quicker than a traditional oven and the food does cook to perfection. So I will link all the measurements and the ingredients down below in the description box. So if you want to check that out, um, all the information will be there in case you want to recreate any of the recipes from this video. Also, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I can see that most of my viewers are not actually subscribed. So please join us, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future content just like this one. So let's get straight into today's video. So the first recipe I'm going to start with is bread. This has been highly requested, so here it is today. So I'm going to be starting with 500 grams of strong white bread flour. Then I'm going to be adding in two teaspoons of salt and a seven gram sachet of active dry yeast. Now you want to give these ingredients a mix. Then make a well in the middle and add in three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. Then lastly, you want to add 300 ml of lukewarm water. And now you want to start mixing the ingredients together until the dough starts to come together. Now I'm just flouring the surface and I'm going to start kneading my dough. I needed this dough for around eight minutes or so. The longer you knead the dough, the better the bread will turn out. So just take your time and knead away. You will notice that the dough is now coming together. If you feel it's a little bit sticky, just add a little bit more flour. That's what I did. And it came together just fine. It got smoother and smoother. And then when it started to look like this, I then formed it into a ball shape. And then I added just a touch of oil into a large bowl. I added the dough into it and covered with some cling film. And I left this for a couple of hours until it had doubled in size. So this is what it looked like when I came back after a couple of hours. As you can see, it has doubled in size and it has risen beautifully. I then transferred onto a parchment sheet. And what you want to do now is knock out all of the air from the dough. So just use your knuckles and your hands and just knock out all of the air and then roll it back on itself like so. So because I'm making my bread in the air fryer, I divided the dough into two pieces so that it would fit in the air fryer baskets. I'm now flouring my surface and I'm going to take half of the dough and I'm going to start by knocking out the air out of this dough and then I'm going to fold in the edges just like that and then I'm going to roll from the bottom onto itself like so. As you can see the dough is still slightly sticky so I did end up flouring my surface a little bit more and then you just want to play around with your dough and um, try and get the shape that you want. So I went for a bloomer loaf shape so I'm just playing with the dough, rolling it out and reshaping it into the shape that I want. So once I was happy with the shape and size, I just transferred the dough onto a sheet of parchment paper and then I repeated the process with the second half of the dough. I then took a knife and I just scored each loaf. Then I'm going to cover them and um, leave them for another hour or so until the dough has doubled in size and then I will come back and show you. So this is what my beautiful loaves look like after I came back um, after leaving them for an hour. I've now got some melted butter which I'm going to brush over the top and the edges. Make sure you cover them well with the butter, it will just give them a golden colour. 
I'm then transferring them both into my air fryer baskets and they did fit absolutely perfectly as you can see. So I pop these into my air fryer at 160 degrees for 12 minutes. I then checked on them and gave them an extra five minutes and they were perfectly done. And this is what my perfect bread looked like when it came out of the air fryer. Honestly, they smell so, so good. And I'm just going to show you how perfectly they cooked underneath as well. The outside was really nice and crispy, just like you would want the crust to be. And then I couldn't help myself. I had to cut into it to show you. I cut a nice slice for myself um, that I had after filming this video. But just look at the inside of the bread. It's absolutely perfect. You can see all the little air pockets. Um, so yeah, this is what the bread turned out to be like. I also ended up adding some butter to this warm slice of bread. I mean, there's nothing better than fresh bread with butter on there. And I'm just going to break into it so you can see the texture of the bread as well. This recipe is super simple and it doesn't require many ingredients. So if you haven't made bread in your air fryer, now is your time to do it. If you don't have an air fryer, you can do this exact recipe, but just pop it into your oven instead. So let's move on to recipe number two, and that is baked potatoes. So I love baked potatoes. I think they are a brilliant lunch. So what I've done is I've taken some baking potatoes, which I have washed and give them a good scrub. And now I'm just taking a fork and piercing some holes in them. Then I'm taking each potato on a sheet of foil. I'm going to spray with oil and season with salt, wrap them up in the foil and in they go into my air fryer. I will be removing the foil halfway through so that the inside is nice and soft and they are nice and crispy on the outside. And I cooked these at 210 degrees Celsius and I cooked them for 25 minutes and they cooked perfectly. As you can see, when I took them out, they were nice and golden brown on the outside. And I'm just going to cut into this for you so you can see how fluffy the inside was. So I topped mine with some butter, some grated cheese and some baked beans. They are the toppings that I like. You can serve however you like. I also served with a side of coleslaw and a side salad. And this was a super delicious lunch, really easy to do. So give it a try. So the next recipe we're moving on to are mini donuts. These are super delicious and perfect for get togethers and little parties. So I'm taking 70 grams of self-raising flour and 70 grams of Greek yogurt. I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of sugar to this. Now give this a really nice mix until this starts to come together. Now I'm just going to transfer onto my worktop. I'm going to work this dough together until it starts to stick together. Um, if it feels like it is getting too sticky, then you can add a little bit of oil like I did. But I also used um, some flour that really helped to bring the dough together. So just be gentle with the dough and take your time until you have something that looks like this. Now you want to start rolling, rolling, rolling until you've got to this stage. Now we're just going to divide into um, equal pieces like so. Now I'm going to be taking each piece of dough and rolling into a ball like this. You can pick the size that you would want to make these. I just prefer them when they are smaller because they cook perfectly on the inside. So once you've rolled out each piece into a bowl, you want to take a little bit of melted butter and give them a really nice toss in the butter. Once you do this, it will just make sure that they get nice and golden in the air fryer. So now I'm going to be loading my air fryer baskets. You don't want to put them too close to each other, give them a little bit of room apart. So I'm going to be using both of my air fryer baskets. So now I'm popping these into my air fryer. I cooked these at 170 degrees Celsius for literally five minutes. You don't want to overcook these because they will get hard. You want them to be nice and fluffy. So five minutes is more than enough for these. 
So once I um, took them out, this is what they looked like. They were slightly golden and they are perfectly cooked. So I just transferred them into a larger dish. I added a little bit more uh, melted butter and just gave them a little toss in the butter. Now transfer onto a serving dish. I topped mine with some powdered sugar to give them a little bit more sweetness and then I also melted some chocolate, this is dark chocolate and just popped that over the top to make them look pretty like this and that is literally it, it's so easy to make these, they are so delicious, they are really soft and fluffy on the inside and um, they are great to make for your kids as a treat. Um, they are nice for little parties so give them a go if you haven't already and we'll move on to the next recipe. So the next thing we are making is shepherd's pie. I love shepherd's pie so let's make this together. So I'm taking some lamb mince, I'm going to add some onion to this, I'm then going to be adding some salt, pepper and spices. I will link all the spices I use down below in the description box so please check that out if you want to recreate this recipe. So I just let the lamb mince cook a little bit in the spices, then I added some tomato puree, a splash of water, some veggie stock cube, I cooked further, then I added in some green peas, and then I added some water. I let this simmer for a little bit until it was cooked, and then I turned the heat off. In the meantime, I prepped my mashed potatoes, so I'm just peeling my potatoes, giving them a rinse, and um, cutting them up into little cubes like this and then going to pour over some boiling water and pop onto the hob to boil until they are nice and soft and then once the mash was done I added some milk and a knob of butter gave them a good mash and I like my um, potatoes to be super creamy like this this is the perfect consistency for me. I then dished up my shepherd's pie. So I've got a little oven proof dish here. I've layered the bottom of the pie with the lamb mince mixture. I'm topping with my smooth um, potatoes and then I'm also topping with some cheese. I love cheese on my shepherd's pie. So I'm going to add lots of that. That's now going directly into my air fryer. I cooked on 180 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes and this was plenty of time for my shepherd's pie to cook perfectly. As you can see when it came out it looked absolutely gorgeous, it was golden brown on the top, the cheese had all melted and I could see the mince sizzling at the bottom. So now I'm just going to um, use a spoon and show you what it looked like on the inside. It honestly tasted so, so delicious and if you are using an air fryer to make it, it's super quick and easy. Usually it takes a lot longer in the oven. Um, so I will be making my shepherd's pies this way in the future. Just look how gorgeous the inside looks. Please give this a go. You will love it. It's absolutely delicious. Now let's move on to the next recipe. So the next thing I'm making are chicken strips. These are so popular in my household. We all love them. My kids have these very often. So I'm just spraying the bottom of my air fryer basket with a little bit of oil before I begin. Then I've got some chicken breast, which I have cut into chicken strip shapes. I've got one beaten egg and I've just got some chicken fry mix here in a plate. So I've got some original one and then just a sprinkle of the spicy one. So I like to dip the chicken strips into the egg wash and then directly into the fry mix. This gives it a really nice coating on the outside and then I'm going to put directly into the air fryer basket. So these went into my air fryer at 190 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. 20 minutes cooks them absolutely perfectly. I did flip them halfway through. As you can see when they came out, they were golden brown on the outside. They were super juicy on the inside and they have so much flavour. Um, you can use any sort of marinade or coating you like. This is the one that we love. So give this one a try if you haven't. Just look at how tender the inside is. So I just served mine with some perinase and my kids had this with some tomato ketchup. 
Now let's move on to our final recipe for this video, which is chicken wings. If you like chicken wings, you will love this recipe. So I'm going to be um, taking my chicken wings and adding some garlic to them. I think I added in um, around three cloves of garlic. I'm also adding in some salt, some paprika. I added some pepper and I also added in a little bit of oil and some of this Nando's Perry sauce. This is the medium one. I find that adding this sauce just gives it a nice little kick so that's what I did gave them a good mix around tossed them all in that coating and then I popped into my air fryer so these went into my air fryer at 190 degrees celsius for 20 minutes I did go and flip them halfway through to make sure they are cooking evenly now in a pan I'm taking some butter, waiting for that to melt. I'm adding two cloves of garlic which I have finely chopped and I'm adding in a little bit of chilli sauce. I'm just making this to um, coat the chicken wings in once they are done. So this is what the chicken wings look like once they were fully cooked through. They look really nice and golden on the outside. I then popped directly into the sauce that I just made. I gave them a really nice toss to coat them in the chilli and garlic flavour. And then it was time for me to plate up. So I just served them in a large plate. And as you can see, they look so delicious. I poured any of the remaining sauce over the top. And yet yeah, these were delicious, a really nice flavour. Give them a go if you haven't tried them already. Okay guys, so we are at the end of my video. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and the recipes I shared with you all. If you did enjoy the video, please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and do not forget to comment below with any new ideas, anything that you would like me to try, let me know and I will try my best to give that a go as well and share it with you all. And I'll see you all in my next one.